Hi, I'd like to welcome you to Kempston Forest to their graduation program. We're really glad that you took time to come and spend with us and your children. They really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. At this time, I'd like to introduce Phoenix Gomatico, who will do the invocation. She is not Lee Cundiff. Lee Cundiff had a basketball hitting in the mouth and can't talk. But we really appreciate Phoenix coming and doing it for us. Bigger than temptation. We gain the strength of the temptation we would sing. Every person should make up his mind that he is bigger than the temptation which is trying to damn him. If he does, he will get bigger as he stands. If he doesn't, he will get smaller as he falls. We must learn what our temptations are, and we will know what we are. This self-discovery will give an insight to the weaknesses we need to work on the hardest. For it is better to recognize the fire than to try to cure burnt fingers. Resist. For the course of least resistance makes both rivers and humans crooked. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. First day of graduating class? Sixth grade. Okay. But the tenth grade the wasn't. The tenth graders were the first. Right. They so, were. Thank you very much. Mrs. Williams has been with us since that time. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Introduce Deputy Williams, who has been with us for a long time, and we are so glad she's been here. Can you tell them more about the DARE program? Thank you, Ms. Jones. And Ms. Jones and Ms. Hawthorne, I want to thank both of them because without their help in scheduling and rescheduling, and especially this year with all the snow and ice, they have, I couldn't have done it without them because I'm always calling to, I'm going to be late or I can't be there or what are we doing today? And uh, without their help, I, I couldn't have done it. We have spent 16 weeks together and we have studied tobacco and alcohol and other drugs. We've just studied about what they do to our minds and bodies. We've talked about pressures. We've talked about peer pressure. Peer pressure starts when in pre-kindergarten, believe it or not. It affects the way you act, affects the way you dress, affects the way you talk, affects the way you think. We've talked about you don't want to be left out especially children, they want to be one of the crowd. We talk about how we resist this pressure. This is all part of the D.A.R.E. program. We don't, all, we don't go into the drugs and what the drugs do all the time. We talk about how to resist the drugs and how to resist the temptations. Self-esteem. Self-esteem is feeling good about yourself. It's giving yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a pat on the back. Everybody, give yourself a pat on the back. That means you have to give yourself a pat on the back every now and then because you're a good person. You feel good about yourself. When you feel good about yourself, you look good. You act good. And everybody says, well, you know, something's going on with her or him. And uh, they look good. I want to be like them. Self-esteem helps us resist this pressure, all the pressures, not only drugs, but the pressures that we endure in daily life. Homework, test, exams, forensics. Look at all those pressures. Getting up and coming to school, that's a pressure. Also, we have had Dare Bear with us. Dare Bear is our little mascot. He is furry and he's stuffed with cotton and he's got little beady looking little eyes. But Dare Bear gets to sit on everybody's desk sometime during the 16 weeks. And Dare Bear is somebody that everybody has talk to and you can hold him and it's something that is tangible. Dare Bear is somebody that has a warm caring heart because that warm caring heart is, is mine. Dare Bear will always be with you and I'll always be with him. We have studied all these different things 
in their class. And I want to thank all of you parents for coming to graduation because your support, your caring, and your love are what all of us need, and of course what all of my, my fifth graders need. And I want to thank all of you for being here. I could stand here for hours talking about DARE and explain exactly what DARE, Drug Abuse Resistance Education, is. But from now on, after DARE graduation, these young ladies and gentlemen will be helping me teach DARE. They're going to be going out of this community throughout this county, other counties, through the state, and they're going to be representatives of DARE. And I'm going to start with us in unison telling you a little bit about what DARE is and what we can do in reference to DARE. Today, while we're still young, before we know the score, we're caught up in a battle. We're victims of a war. Life gets so confusing, can't tell heroes from the thugs. When our musicians and physicians and our athletes fall to drugs, the choices that we have to make aren't what our parents had. Not like TV, life's hard to tell the good guys from the bad. Starting now, let's take a stand and help each other out. Let's learn the ways of saying no. That's what DARE's about. We dare to keep off drugs. We dare to just say no. We dare to make this pledge and let our minds and bodies grow. Want to sneak some beer? Just say no beer. Want to smoke some dope? Just say no. Want to take a hit? No thanks, Pastor Rick. DARE tells us so. It's our right to say no. The choices that we have to make aren't what our parents had. Not like TV, life's hard to tell the good guys from the bad. Starting now, let's take a stand and help each other out. Let's learn the ways of saying no. That's what DARE is about. Want to try some crack? No, no way, Jack. Got some uppers you might like? Take a high. You want to get high? Walk on DARE tells us so. It's our right to say no. Want to pop a lube? No, no way, you do. Want to snort a line? PCP will thrill you. Dare tells us so. It's our right to say no. Dare to keep off drugs. Dare to just say no. Dare to make this pledge and let our minds and bodies grow. You want to take those out? The next part of the program, I am glad to introduce Chief Deputy C.L. Abernathy, as we call him, Corky Abernathy. He's been <coughs> with the Nottoway Sheriff's Department since 1976, and he has been Chief Deputy, which means he's one of my bosses, since 1988. And we wouldn't be able to survive if it weren't for Corky Abernathy. Thank you. I asked Ann to say something nice about me, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Got something a little different. I'm not much of a public speaker. So when I was preparing for this, um, maybe a week or so ago, I uh, came across this story. And the story is called St. George and the Dragon. And uh, I'm going to read that to you. And then when we finish this, we're going to go back and kind of maybe bring this up to maybe our terms. The story is called St. George and the Dragon. It says, long ago when the knights lived in the land, there was one knight whose name was Sir George. He was not only braver than all the rest, but he was so noble, kind, and good that the people came to call him St. George. No robbers ever dared to trouble the people who lived near his castle, and all the wild animals were driven or killed away so that little children could play even in the woods without being afraid. One day St. George rode throughout the country. Everywhere he saw the men busy at their work in the fields, the women singing at work in their homes, and the little children shouting at their play. These people are all safe and happy. They need me no more, said St. George. But somewhere, perhaps, there is trouble and fear. There may be some place where little children cannot play in safety. Some woman may have been carried away from her home. Perhaps there are even dragons left to be slain. Tomorrow I shall ride away and never stop until I find work which only a knight can do. Early the next morning, St. George put on his helmet and all of his shining armor and fastened his sword at his side. 
that he mounted his great white horse and rode out from his castle gate. Down the steep, rough road he went, sitting straight and tall and looking brave and strong as a knight should look. On through the little village at the foot of the hill and out across the country he rode. Everywhere he saw rich fields filled with waving grain. Everywhere there was peace and plenty. He rode on and on until at last he came into a part of the country he had never seen before. He noticed that there were no men working in the fields. The houses which he passed stood silent and empty. The grass along the roadside was scorched as if a fire had passed over it. A field of wheat was all trampled and burned. St. George drew up his horse and looked carefully about him. Everywhere there was silence and desolation. What can be the dreadful thing which has driven all these people from their homes? I must find out and give them help if I can, he said. But there was no one to ask, so St. George rode forward until at last, far in the distance, he saw the walls of a city. Here surely I shall find someone who can tell me the cause of all this, he said. So he rode more swiftly toward the city. Just then the great gate opened and St. George saw crowds of people standing inside the wall. Some of them were weeping. All of them seemed afraid. As St. George watched, he saw a beautiful maiden dressed in white with a girdle of scarlet about her waist pass through the gate alone. The gate clanged shut and the maiden walked along the road weeping bitterly. She did not see St. George, who was riding quickly toward her. Maiden, why do you weep? He asked as he reached her side. She looked up at St. George, sitting there on his horse, so straight and tall and beautiful. Oh, Sir Knight, she cried, ride quickly from this place. You know not the danger you are in. Danger, said St. George. Do you think a knight would flee from danger? Besides you, a fair girl, are here alone. Think you a knight would leave you so? Tell, you, tell me your trouble that I may help you. No, no, she cried, hasten away. You would only lose your life. There is a terrible dragon near. He may come at any moment. One breath would destroy you if he found you here. Go, go quickly. Tell me more of this, said St. George sternly. Why are you here alone to meet this dragon? Are there no men left in yon city? Oh, said the maiden, my father the king is old and feeble. He has only me to help him take care of his people. This terrible dragon has driven them from their homes carried away their cattle, and ruined their crops. They have all come within the walls of the city for safety. For weeks now, the dragon has come to the very gates of the city, and we have been forced to give him two sheep each day for his breakfast. Yesterday, there were no sheep left to give, so he said that unless a young maiden were given him today, he would break down the walls and destroy the city. The people cried to my father to save them, but he could do nothing. I am going to give myself to the dragon. Perhaps if he has me, the princess, he may spare our people. Lead the way, brave princess. Show me where this monster may be found. When the princess saw St. George's flashing eyes and great strong arm as he drew forth his sword, she felt afraid no more. Turning, she led the way to his shining pool. That's where he stays, she whispered. See the water moves, he's waiting. St. George saw the head of the drag, dragon lift from the pool. Fold on fold, he rose from the water. And when he saw St. George, he gave a roar of rage and plunged toward him. The smoke and flames flew from his nostrils, and he opened his great jaws as if to swallow both the knight and his horse. St. George shouted, and waving his sword above his head, rode at the dragon. Quick and hard came the blows from St. George's sword. It was a terrible battle. At last, the dragon was wounded. He roared with pain and plunged at St. George, opening his great mouth close to the brave knight's head. St. George looked carefully, then struck with all of his strength straight down through the dragon's throat, and he fell at the horse's feet, dead. Then St. George shouted for joy at his victory. He called to the princess. She came and stood beside him. Give me the girdle from about your waist, O princess, said St. George. And the princess gave him her girdle, and St. George bound it around the dragon's neck, and he pulled the dragon after them by the little silken ribbon back to the city so that all the people could see that the dragon could never harm them again. When they saw St. George bringing the princess back in safety and knew that the dragon was slain, they threw open the gates of the city and set up great shouts of joy. Then the king heard them and came out from his palace to see why the people were shouting. When he saw his daughter safe, he was the happiest of them all. O oh, brave knight, he said, I am old and weak. Stay here and help me guard my people from harm. I'll stay as long as ever you have need of me, St. George answered. So he lived in the palace and helped the old king take care of his people. 
And when the old king died, St. George was made king in his stead. The people felt happy and safe so long as they had such a brave and good man for their king. I guess by now you're wondering what in the world has a, a knight and a dragon and a maiden have to do with their graduation. But let's just go back for a few minutes and look at the three main characters in this story. We have the dragon, we have the maiden, and we have the knight, St. George. And of course there are no dragons out there. I don't think any of y'all have seen any dragons on your way to school this morning. But um, let's take a few minutes and compare these three characters back to what's going on in today's society. Let's take the dragon, for instance. When I think of the dragon, I would probably say that you know, the dragon in today's society is illegal drug activity, drug abuse. You remember this story how it talked about um, the children were afraid to go out and play. Everybody was kind of locked up in their homes. Can you think of any place in this country today that is like that? And as I was thinking about this, I didn't have to think very long. It's our very own capital city of Richmond, you know, 60 miles from this very place where we're sitting now. It's very much like that. There are communities in, in the housing and apartment complexes there in that city where children can't go out and play simply because there are drug wars going on in the streets there. You know, people are um, being shot while they sleep in bed at night from bullets being ripped through the walls and into their bodies, from drug wars, turf wars, that, as they call them, that are going on in the streets there. And just like in this inside, we saw inside this little castle, this gate in the city, you know, people are afraid. They're afraid to go outside. They're locked up in their homes. What about the maiden? Who shall we compare the maiden to? If the dragon is drug abuse and drug activity, who, who, should, who would the maiden be? And I said, well, the maiden is this our very own country. You know, our very own country is being sacrificed. It's, it's on a road to destruction from this, this killer that's loose in the streets right now. You remember the sheep, how they, how they had to give up all the cattle, and they finally gave up all the cattle. The man just took everything, the dragon took everything that they had. And finally, he, they were forced to give him two sheep each day until all the sheep were gone. I mean, that's what drugs do. It takes from you, it takes from you, it takes from you. And finally, there's nothing else to give but your own life. And it takes that very, it just, it's very greedy. And just like this maiden, our country is headed toward a road of destruction simply because of drug abuse and drug activity. There's greedy people that are involved in these things and that they're never satisfied. The more they get, the more they want. Well, that takes care of the two characters. What about the third character, who is St. George? Who's going to be the saints? that's going to help this country. Who's going to be the saints that's going to kill this dragon? And uh, I didn't have to think long about that either. I think I'm looking at it. You know, it's been several weeks, several months, and learning about drug abuse, what it does to your bodies, what it does to your families, and very simply what it does to our country. And uh, I feel very confidently that y'all will be the, you will be the saints that are going to help us. It's going to probably straighten this country out that uh, you're going to be brave, and you're going to be strong, and you're going to be courageous, just like this night. And you're going to take a stand. And you're not going to let this country be destroyed by something that can very easily be destroyed by just standing up for what is right. I looked in the dictionary. I wanted to get a clear definition of the word dare. And Webster's Dictionary says the word dare is it means to have enough courage for some act or to pose or defy. And so today I'm, I'm standing before you and I'm going to dare you. I'm going to dare you to do something about this drug abuse, about this illegal drug activity. And I pray and I hope that you all will find <coughs> grace and that you will take this dare, that you will take this responsibility, that you will be accountable and go forth that uh, this dragon may fall at your feet dead also. In conclusion, I have a poem I'm going to read one more time. It's not a long poem. It's called Our Heroes, and it was written by Phoebe Carey. It says, here's a hand to the boy who has courage to do what he knows to be right. When he falls in the way of temptation, he has a hard battle to fight. 
who strives against self and his comrades will find a most powerful foe. All honor to him if he conquers, a cheer for the boy who says no. There's many a battle fought daily, the world knows nothing about it. There's many a brave little soldier whose strength puts a legion to rout. And he who fights sin single-handed is more of a hero, I say, than he who leads soldiers to battle and conquers by arms in the fray. Be steadfast, my boy, when you're tempted to do what you know to be right. Stand firm by the colors of manhood, and you will overcome in the fight. The right be your battle cry ever in waging the war of life. And God, who knows who are the heroes, will give you strength for the strife. Thank you. Thank you, Forky. The next part of our program will be turned over to the fifth graders. To begin with, there is one requirement, homework requirement of DARE class, and that is to write the paper. And we refer, refer to the paper as taking a stand paper. You're taking a stand against drugs and alcohol. What do you do if you're put in the position that people are going to tempt you with drugs or alcohol? The fifth graders have to write in their own opinions. It can be a short story. It may be a poem. It may be just um, a couple paragraphs. <clears throat> what are they going to do to resist temptations of drugs and alcohol? They're read in class, and then the class votes on which one is the best paper, who do they want to represent their class at their graduation. And this year, I'm pleased to say, Lindsay Taylor. Thomas, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Lindsay Thomas, excuse me. And I would like for you to recite your poem. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. They're not for your mom, they're not for your dad, they're not for your sister, they're not for your brother, they're not for your grandma or your grandma. They're not for a dog, they're not for a cat, they're not for a cricket, they're not for a rat. They're not for Rudolph, they're not for Santa, they're not for Jip by Jack. They're not for Gamma on the Gipsy. They're not for you. They're not for me. They're not for the moon. They're not for the sun. Drugs are not for anyone. Thank you. Bentley was the author. Hardaway. 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 What am I? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Hardaway Bentley. He was an author, and I had the privilege of reviewing their skit the other day. And I really like it, and you're going to really enjoy it. The, um, they have come up with a typical situation and what they would like to see happen in that type of situation. So I'm going to turn this part over to you. Hardaway and his associate. Yeah. 
and a lot of teamwork to do. You can put it together in a little no time. Now is the time you've been waiting for for 16 weeks. Your diplomas and your t-shirts. I'm going to ask Ms. Jones if she would give out your diplomas and I have your t-shirts for you. Yes, let's see. <coughs> fellows back a little ways. Let them stand up. Just stand up and let them Thank you. 
please? This class, just to be very instrumental in helping to achieve world peace. Because there's nothing that you can't do when you put your heads to it. You can get credit for it. Just remember, when things get down, give yourself that pat on the back and say, I can do it. I'm a good person and I can make a difference. And just remember, look at yourself in the mirror and give yourself a big smile. And say, yeah, I can do it. And I can resist those temptations and I'm going to make a difference. I want to thank you for making my world, my year, very special. One more thing I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you if you would lay down your diplomas and stand up. And I know you're not going to want to do this, but I'd like you to hold hands. Too hot. 